I will welcome you to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where today we're going to take a look at the PDF exporter, PDF presentation builder, whatever you want to call it. The most effective, in my opinion, way to export a PDF quickly from Photoshop is probably using this little PDF presentation technique. So I'm going to show you how I do it here in Photoshop. Before we get going, though, this tutorial is sponsored by our good friends over at WP Engine. They have very refined web hosting specifically for a WordPress website. It's great stuff. I've hosted tutvid.com on them for two years. Go to tutvid.com slash WP hyphen engine and get the exclusive discount uh, for tutvid.com viewers. There's a link down in the description to the video if if it's easier to just click it. So up here under File, uh, Automate, we have a PDF presentation selection. Now we can hit that and basically what we need to do is we can either add the open files currently in Photoshop, which means we would add this JPEG and this .psd that I have open, and these would become pages in a PDF. I am not going to do that though. I'm gonna browse instead, and I'm gonna browse here on my desktop. I'm going to go here to Images to Process, go to Batch, and I'm gonna choose these five JPEGs right here. I'm going to hit open. Now we can drag them and restack them in order. Let's say we want page one to be image number two, page two to be image number three, and so on and so forth. We can drag this uh, wherever we like. We can duplicate uh, an image. So there's two copies of it. Maybe we want one to be at the beginning, one to be at the end, something like that. That's great. You can always remove an image by selecting it and hitting the remove button, of course. Now the output options are kind of interesting. The first thing we have is an option to save either a multi-page document or a presentation. Now a multi-page document is just like a regular PDF background, white, gray, black, whatever you like. Um, font size, what the font size is going to be is underneath each image or document that you export, you can choose to show the file name or the title of the document or the author or some EXIF info, uh, copyright description, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The font size has to do with uh, this included information. So we can just throw you know file name in there. And if you include file name, you can choose to include the extension or not. I'm gonna go with not. In fact, uh, background, I'm gonna go with gray here. Um, and the presentation options, those obviously matter if you're creating a presentation. And a presentation is basically a full screen PDF. It like goes to the P Adobe Acrobat full screen mode and you can choose it to auto advance pages every X number of seconds to loop after the last page. You've got a bunch of transitions. Most of the transitions I found are kind of, I don't know, chintzy. Maybe fade is okay, but the dissolve is really not like a real dissolve and some of the others are just really, really bad. Um, so I probably would go with none uh, unless you're really shooting for a particular look. But let's focus here on multi-page document. I'm just gonna hit save and Photoshop is gonna say, hey, where would you like to save the PDF? I'm gonna save it right onto my desktop and I'm just gonna name it 01.pdf. Go ahead and save that. And then we get the save Adobe PDF uh, dialog box that pops up where we get general stuff like embed page, th uh, page thumbnails, optimizer for fast web preview, I like that. We have Adobe PDF presets up here. I'm gonna go with smallest file size. You do have some high quality print, press quality, some other PDF X options here, as well as high quality print. I'm gonna go with smallest file size and check on optimize for fast web preview. A lot of what I'm doing with PDFs is to share comp sheets with clients so they can view work that I've done or photography that I've done quickly online. Uh, you have some compression options as well where you can compress JPEGs and image quality and convert 16-bit to 8-bit, yada, yada, yada. Output again, you've got some color output options, different things like that. Security is kind of interesting. You can require a password to open the document if you want, uh, or require a password just to do things like printing and editing and other tasks, right? Printing allowed. Maybe if you want to allow printing, you can just specify printing only at a lower resolution of 150 dpi. Something interesting there. Um, changes, depending on how complicated or simple your PDF is, um, some of these things may make sense, such as filling in form fields and signing and all of that kind of digital signature work that uh, Adobe Acrobat will allow you to do. And then you can uh, enable plain text metadata, copying of text, uh, text access for screen reader, uh, devices for visually impaired. That might be a good one to throw on there uh, just because you can. Uh, and then summary is just kind of summary stuff. So we're going to go ahead and hit save PDF. And by the way, you can save this as a preset. So if you're you know exporting maybe a couple PDFs a day or you find this is something that you're really going to use, you can always save the preset so you can quickly get back and export the same kind of PDF over and over and over again so you have some consistency. Go ahead and hit save PDF. It says document permissions password field cannot remain blank because of course we ticked that on but we didn't place a password. So here you could just you know say whatever password, you know password, whatever. I'm not going to give it a password though. Uh, just know that you have that option. So let's go ahead and save PDF um, and it will save the PDF. If, uh, there we go. Uh, it's going to save the PDF right there on the desktop. Remember, as 01.pdf. 
So as you saw there, it just quickly breezed through all those images. Um, and if I quickly take a peek at my desktop, I can see here I've got 01.pdf. If, if I double click, Adobe Acrobat opens up. Let me just uh, bring it all into screen here. And we can see the first page has this image. And you can see the text is down near the bottom of this image. It's very, very tiny because this image is very, very large. So we've got image one, two, three, four, five, and then image one again at the end. So we've created a, a PDF very quickly and very effectively. Now, a couple quick things about this a PDF creation. You probably want all of your images to be the same width. So if you go Command Option or Control Alt I, for image size, you want to make sure the width is the same for all of your images, so all of your page sizes are the same, and also, and this is very important to the resolution, the DPI, or the pixels per inch, PPI, whatever, you want your resolution to be the same. So, like, all these images, I want them to be all 2048 wide with a 72 pixel per inch resolution. Just a quick little tip to throw in there. And also, if I was to do something like this, this is an old presentation that I did a couple of years ago. You can see I've got 76 slides. I created it all in Photoshop. Not the best slideshow software out there, but it's something I'm very, very comfortable with, and I just go for it. What the heck? Who cares? What I would do here is I would merge each of these layer groups... Uh, merge each of these layer groups into a layer. So it hit merge layers. The reason that's not coming up is because the layer is not turned on. Um, so I would merge, yeah, if Photoshop lets me, I would merge the group as you can see. And uh, then what I would do is go file, export, layers to files, and then I would go back and choose automate PDF presentation, select all those files, boom, create a PDF. It's actually pretty simple, um, and it's much faster than, let's say, saving out every single individual layer as a JPEG and then stitching them all together with you know Adobe Acrobat, which is actually easy to do, but saving all of these out as individual uh, JPEGs can be a little time consuming. So you can do it all kind of in one shot right here from Photoshop using the file automate PDF presentation. So for PDF presentation, in Photoshop. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.